to a large extent, then, you're driven by what your customers, the shoppers in your stores, say that they want. What are they telling you when you ask them about how important environmentally sensitive farming is? I think we see a very consistent message, um, and it's across all social economic groupings within our stores and the 17 million people that come in each week. Roughly half of them say, yep, we would expect you to be getting on with improving the environmental performance of yourselves and the rest of the supply chain. It's not unreasonable for the customer to take a view and say, well, you know, you're large organisations, you've got a lot of influence, we expect you to be doing the right things. And what do you predict? Do you, do you think this is going to increase, this concern about sustainability? Is, is that what you think will happen? I don't see it diminishing. And if you think about where the, we are in the present economic circumstances, the fact that we're still getting a very clear message from customers that it's important to them would lead me to suggest that as the economic uh, climate improves that it will continue to maintain a high priority in terms of what consumers expect suppliers to be doing. So what does this mean that you are doing with your suppliers? Well, if I take as one example our dairy supply chain, so we have just under 300 dairy suppliers, dairy farmers who supply all our fresh liquid milk. Uh, we've been working with them for over five years and we've been doing carbon footprints on those farms. Now there is no market drive in terms of carbon footprinting and being able to reduce it. But what we've been able to show them by analysing the data is that farmers who are, are technically efficient are environmentally efficient and also are economically efficient. And so that triple bottom line, which sometimes seems like a bit of a, a concept, actually are able to demonstrate it. And the farmers who are engaging with that work are getting a clearer insight, a more detailed insight about how they can position their businesses. And I think going forward, it's all about the efficiency of resource use, which is obviously where LEAF has come from, and integrating the resources that we use in food and fibre production. So I think there's some very clear messages about it, being able to understand where the efficiencies are in, in production systems and being able to address the key ones, as well as having a message that if a customer asks, we're able to respond. One key element of sustainability has to be the use of soil. Now, one of the things that you've been doing with LEAF is to look at how you can help farmers to think very carefully about the soil. Given that soil is one of those finite resources, we don't have much. <laughs> it tends to get built upon. Um, it's, a very, it's an incredibly valuable resource. We need to be um, understanding our management of it. And I think I had a particular view that soil science has sort of disappeared a little off the radar. Not for so a sexy. Well, yeah, it's, it's not been one of those areas that people have talk, spoken about and engaged with. And that's why we came to LEAF and said, well, within the LEAF concept, have you got some understanding that could help us raise awareness of the big issues on soil? Um, and so that's the document, Simply Sustainable Soils, to start to raise awareness. You know, it's not the complete solution, and we're starting to understand a lot more about soils, but I was really um, hopeful and very pleased with the way that it's been received, in that people recognise it as being uh, understandable, uh, comprehensible, and something that can give them tools to be employed on farms. To what extent do, do you feel that Shoppers are going to want to be able to see something on the pack of the produce that, that they buy that's going to assure them not only how it's been grown, but maybe even who's grown it. I think we've done a lot of work on traceability and putting farmer names on, on product. But we're increasingly seeing people asking for a narrative. So what is it about this product? You know, can you tell me some of the story? First, a proportion of customers. You know, it would be wrong to say it's all customers, but there's very clearly a group. And I think it's a group that will continue to grow. Who are saying, explain to me why, give me other reassurances about that. And I think that's where we can start to see perhaps some of the social media and some of the uh, communications which we now, tools that we now have, being able to assist us in presenting the farming stories much more clearly, um, without confusing, but actually giving customers real reassurance, real understanding and real linkages with the farms which the foods come from. An insight, I suppose, and no greater way to get that insight than Open Farm Sunday, which you have continued to support. It's fantastic to have a vehicle where we can get people onto farms, hear firsthand from the producers, to actually see, smell, look at and experience. And that's what Open Farm Sunday does. It's a fantastic opportunity for people to get some mud under their fingers, see agriculture and understand. And a more um, educated and a better informed 
society, which I think Open Farms and is helping to provide, is by far the best advocate for British production. So what did you learn on Open Farm Sunday then? Take a brolly. <laughs> At least this year. Yeah. This year. Yeah. yeah. And if you had to sum up what LEAF means to you? Finding that sensible balance on resources. That farming it has so many factors affecting it and things that it produces. We've got to be very careful not to look through a single lens. And I think LEAF brings us that broader view, that landscape view, which we do need as we go forward in food production.